everybody, this is Jim Cornette. You're watching Southern States Wrestling Mountain Empire. This is your wrestling. Welcome to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. I'm your host, Dakota Booth. On today's program, we're going to be taking a look at our upcoming event on September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. VIP tickets are on sale now for that event. You can go to kingofkingsport.com anytime, or during business hours, you can stop by Evermore Comics next to Jersey Mike's on Eastman Road in Kingsport, Tennessee. One match that you don't want to miss that's going down that night is Kyle Cool defending his Southern States title against DeAndre Jackson. This is a match that's been building up for months and months, so right now we're going to take a look at their last meeting and hear a word from our champion, Kyle Cool. Welcome back to Southern States Wrestling. You see the action still taking place here. Southern States title on the line. Champion Kyle Cool, Mr. Hollywood, he likes to call himself, has been in control for the last several minutes. DeAndre Jackson's fighting, trying to get some breaking. Could this be it? And once again, Kyle is way ahead of DeAndre Jackson. I'm going to tell you this. Cool may act like an idiot, but this is a very smart man right here. He scouts every opponent, but the one thing i got to disagree with is all this showboat and all this flamboyant stuff he's trying to do in the ring. Trying to show people how strong he is, how big and bad he is. He may have been able to pin DeAndre if he would have jumped on him as soon as he missed that cross body. But he took too long of a break because he wanted to showboat. And the people are coming, wanting DeAndre to come on and get back to his feet and start fighting back here. Ever since that big boot to the side of his head a few minutes ago, DeAndre Jackson has had all kinds of trouble. What is Kyle Cool going for? Belly to back suplex just dumped him on the back of his head. Another move we have seen Cool win with on television right here. And is he going to do the job? Nope. He's able to get his up, get his shoulder up, and DeAndre Jackson has got to find a break. He has got to do something here soon, or he is going to lose his shot at this title because Cool is going to eventually going to be able to put him away. Kyle Cool raking the back. Now he's going back in, digging in his face, just digging in his face and raking down there. Referee Kevin may want to check out his fingernails. Now a big kick in the corner. Come on, Kevin, you got to get him out of the corner there. You're not even doing the count, referee. Standing on his throat, finally a slow count started by the referee. Come on, DeAndre, I know you got it in you to win the title here. There you see several of the people still coming into the matches here at the Appalachian Fairground, part of the Gray Block Party. It's been a wonderful day right here, a wonderful night. We're glad you enjoyed it, glad you came out. What is Kyle Cool going for here? Going to throw him across the ring again? No, nope. uh, DeAndre. DeAndre faked him out right there across body. He couldn't hold on. He bounced off of him. I don't think the referee was in position. Missed that clothesline. Big forearm right to the top of the head from Kyle Cool to Kyle Cool. Big clothesline from DeAndre Jackson. This is what he's been waiting on. Missed that punch. Atomic drop. The champion, big elbow right to the top of his chrome dome. The champion is in trouble right here. DeAndre's got to go for something. What is What is he doing? Wow, what an elbow drop. What an elbow drop from the challenger, DeAndre Jackson. And I thought he had him. I thought that was a three count right there. So did a lot of people at ringside. They thought a new champion was going to be crowned right there. Come on, DeAndre. you got to get across that ring and get on him. DeAndre pulling from his fans. He wants it right here. He's got him. Big chop. Couldn't see what was happening there. Right? Evidently, the referee, Kevin, doesn't know about the horseshoe when you're on television for the referees. Another big shot. Kyle Cool able to reverse it. 
What's he going to do here once again? Taking too much time. Misses in the corner. Could this be the thump? Could he do it right here? Could he put him away with the thump? There it is. We're going to see a new champion. One, two, three. Oh, come on, Kevin. You didn't see his foot was not on the rope till after the three. He got the three count. Don't restart it. What are you doing? No, Kevin. He already got the three count. We have a new champion right here. DeAndre Jackson cannot believe it. He should be handed the belt right now. Watch out, Kyle Cool from behind. Roll up. He's got his feet on the rope, Kevin. His feet are on the ropes. Oh, come on. We saw a brand new champion. We saw a brand new champion right there. Kyle Cool knows he stole this one. Look at him. He's trying to find the belt and get out of there. He has the thrill of victory right there. Sunglasses and belt, and he is getting out here still the champion. He stole one. And there's the agony of defeat. DeAndre Jackson was robbed right here in gray. I cannot believe this. Hello, SSW fans. You know me, Mr. Hollywood, Kyle Cool. DeAndre Jackson, I keep hearing you talking all this mess, this and that, this and that. I can stand here and tell you myself, but really I don't have to. Everybody already knows that you're softer than church music, and I'm tougher than woodpecker lips. <laughs> Word on the street, you've been looking for me. Let me tell you something, DeAndre Jackson. I'm the champ. This here is my belt. I don't have to go looking for anybody. You come find me. I'm the champ. You're the challenger. And the powers that be have demanded that I give you a rematch for this belt right here. This belt, you want some of this belt? If I'm putting this on the line, DeAndre Jackson, you need to put something on the line yourself. And in just a few short weeks, I'm going to let everybody know exactly what that is. Wrestling fans, don't forget to purchase your VIP ticket for the King Sport Civic Auditorium event on September 27th anytime at kingofkingsport.com or during business hours at Evermore Comics in Kingsport, Tennessee. When we come back from this break, we're going to see some action from last week's Russell County Fair. Stick around, wrestling fans. is Tim Young and this is my marketing firm. We represent clients all over the globe. And like the king of king sport, I'm the king of marketing. So if you need anything, web design, social media, commercials, advertising, creative, jingles, I'll write a jingle right now to show you how good I am. It'll be in the next commercial. Tim Young's unnamed marketing firm. You need us. Calvary Baptist Church, 1238 Pine Street, Kingsport, Tennessee. Regular schedule of services, Sunday, 9.15 a.m. for Bible study fellowship class for all ages. 10.30 a.m. worship. 6 p.m. blast for children, wake for youth. Sunday night life for adults. Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. children and youth activities. 3D Bible study for adults. If you are part of a nonprofit organization, listen to this. You now have the opportunity to bring the wrestling TV stars to your town and make money for your group. Over the past two decades, Southern States Wrestling has helped raise money for church groups, schools, ball teams, volunteer fire departments, children's hospitals, Ronald McDonald House, scout troops, and many more. Our staff is waiting to hear from you and get started on what could be your biggest fundraiser to date. Southern States Wrestling and your group are the perfect tag team to raise the funds you need. The TV stars of the Power Half Hour are coming to a town near you. It's the Southern States Wrestling Fall Spectacular. Saturday night, September 27th, Kingsport, Tennessee at the Civic Auditorium. That's the Fall Spectacular. Saturday night, the 27th of September, Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Hall of Fame, Heroes and Legends Night. More information each week here on the Power Half Hour. Saturday night, September 20th, Five County Fair, Farmville, Virginia, presented by the Bruiser Wrestling Federation. Saturday night, September 13th, Gray, Tennessee, Daniel Boone High School, a fundraiser for the Daniel Boone High School Marching Band. A huge night of action as Southern States Wrestling and the Empire Wrestling Coalition team up to raise money 
for the Daniel Boone Band. It's a big night of EWC wrestling. Saturday night, August 30th, Carver Rec Center, Johnson City, Tennessee. Saturday, August 30th, Johnson City at the Carver Rec. Don't forget the 27th of September, it's the Fall Spectacular King Sports Civic Auditorium. When the TV stars come to your town, make sure you catch the action. Be there. My biggest dream in pro wrestling comes true. For once and for all, I get to wrestle in the Civic Auditorium. It's a building I've grown up in, it's a building I've learned a lot in, but once and for all, I get my chance to stand in the center of it. Scott Sterling. They can talk about your mean streak. Frank Parker, they can talk about the cripplers. They can talk about how mean and nasty you guys are. They can talk about your mean streak. But it seems every time I get you guys one-on-one, -on -one, I stand the victor. So Scott Sterling, bring your mean and nasty to the 27th. Bring your big, big and bad because I want it. Because I'm coming with the Mountain Empire on my side. Jake Booth, the O.P. Taylor of professional wrestling. You know, Jake, I've watched the television, I've watched the monitors, I've seen you come out saying how proud you are to be the champion, how, how you've got the people behind you showing that trophy off, just like little Opie Taylor when he got the black guy from the bully. But I'll tell you what, I'm not Andy Taylor. I'm not Sheriff Andy. I'm not going to come in, put my arm around you, tell you some stupid life story, make everything all right in the next half hour. No. I'm coming to Kingsport, the Civic Auditorium, get back what is rightfully mine, that Southern States TV title. You know, I killed, held it for over a year, not too long ago. When we come into that arena that night, Jake Booth, you are going to learn some life lessons. You are going to learn it takes more than three quick seconds to be a champion. You can get lucky for three seconds, but can you hold that title? Can you hang on to it? Can you face a real champion in the ring? I don't think so. So when I come in there sat Saturday, September the 27th, Scott Sterling stepping in that ring, and he's going to do a little nipping, a little bud nipping. I'm going to nip that tag team title. I'm going to take that Southern States TV title, and I'm going to nip it to bud, and I'm going to put it around our waist. Me and Frank Parker are coming back after those tag team titles, but that night, I'm taking that title away from you and put it around my waist where it's supposed to be. There you heard from Jake Booth and Scott Sterling about their big match on September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. And that's some action you don't want to miss out on. So be sure to pick up your tickets now at kingofkingsport.com anytime or during business hours at Evermore Comics in Kingsport, Tennessee. This past week, Misty James had two chances at regaining her Southern States Ladies title from Rebecca Lynn. So right now, let's jump right into that action and take a look at what happened. Here we go from the Russell County Fair last Friday night. Misty James, the challenger, chasing Rebecca Lynn, the champion. And we're about five minutes into the action here, and it has been just pretty much Misty James all over Rebecca Lynn. You see her here with that vicious bow and arrow hold. Misty going for it again, slapping her until Rebecca tries to cover up, and then she just grabs her wrist and pulls back on her. And then just dumps her face first in the mat, and Rebecca Lynn does something smart here. Now, last week, she ran to the ropes a lot of times when she didn't need to, but right there I believe was the only way she was going to get out of that hold, and I believe Misty may have put a cramp into her leg or hurt her Rebecca. You can see is favoring her leg. Going for the lockup again. One of her old tactics, she likes to just take that thumb and stick it right in the girl's eyes and goes right after vicious kicks in the corner. Big choke. Oh, just knife, reverse knife edge right there. Misty trying to get it going. Rebecca just beating the fire out of her right here. Throws her back into the corner. She don't want her getting out of there. Follows it in with a big clothesline. Setting her up for something. Going to throw her across the ring again. Come at her again. Another big clothesline. This one takes Misty down to the mat. Rebecca Lynn, once again, I tell you, lazy covers. I don't know if it's just she's trying to add insult to injury or what the purpose of doing that is, but if you're trying to win a match, you've got to get in there. Misty fires right back. You have to get in there and have a cover and try to hold your opponent down. These two girls are slugging it out right now. You see the hot in this building here at the fairgrounds. We're about seven minutes into the action, and Rebecca Lynn has turned the case here and she is just laying it to Misty James what she going for here drops the elbow right across her chest they're just taking the breath right out of her 
Ooh, very close. Going in for a chokehold. She's trying to take all the steam out of her, trying to run all the gas out of her. Trying to take that wind. If you can't breathe, you can't kick out. Misty fighting back. Oh, big punch. Another big punch. Now she has Rebecca. Rebecca reverses it into the corner once again. Oh, Misty just collapses in the corner. And now the foot right across the throat. Rebecca Lynn is doing everything she can do to slow Misty down here. Now she's kind of taunting the fans here. And Castlewood, Virginia, what a great ovation Castlewood gave Misty when she came out. And Misty is fighting back. Big chop. End of the ropes we go. I don't know if that was a clothesline or just an open hand slap right to the chest. I couldn't tell. And a very close to getting a three count there. Misty wants this title. She has chased Rebecca all over the southern states, and she wants to get this title back. She wants to win it for her fans and friends and supporters. Here we go. Double-handed, just two big chops right there. And Rebecca's down. Misty kind of backing up, trying to get her breath. Now she lays in her own big clothesline, and she's looking to the people for that support, and the champion takes a run to the floor. Referee Chris McNear starting his count. Now Misty going out on the floor after Rebecca. Rebecca runs right back into the ring. Where is she going? What is she doing here? She's grabbing her belt, coming right at us. Misty's falling right behind her. We may have a fight right out here on the stage here at the Russell County Fair. And Rebecca runs right out the back door. She went right out the back door. She just ran away. Chris still counting. I believe he's going to count the champion out. Misty is surprised by this. The people are surprised by this. Cannot believe this, and it is. It's a count out. Misty James is your winner by count out in Russell County. Chris McNear going to the timekeeper. He's going to explain the title cannot change hands on a count out or disqualification. The people here are not happy. Misty James is not happy. I don't think anyone except Rebecca Lynn is happy with this. She got a loss, but she got out of here with the title. The people are letting Chris McNear know that, but hey, it's in the rules. There's nothing he can do, and Misty is fired up. She wants Rebecca to come back and finish this. You certainly see the people were not happy with the outcome here. Your winner, Misty James. Now let's fast forward 24 hours later to Johnson City, Tennessee. Here we are, Johnson City, Tennessee, Carver Rec Center. Misty James has been fighting Rebecca Lynn with everything she has, and you see right there, J.D. Anderson came out to the match. He had no business being out there. Look at him putting something in his hand. For the last two minutes, it has been all Misty. She has been all over Rebecca. You see Rebecca down on the ground. Her legs still hurting from the night before. There you see JD's manager over there. What a weasel that guy is. Misty shoots Rebecca in the corner. She's going for something big right here. Watch what happens. I don't know if that's powder, rat poison, salt. I don't know what he threw right in her eyes, but it was a while before she could see clearly. Big kick to the gut, and she runs her face right into her own knee. She drops Misty face first into her knee and gets the three count. I tell you, something has to be done about Rebecca Lynn with her cheating, with her outside interference, and with her count outs. Next week, we'll hear from both ladies. As you saw, once again, Misty James so close to regaining that Southern States ladies title. Next week, we're going to hear from both of those ladies about their big matchup on September 27th at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Also, don't forget, this Saturday, September 13th, at 7.30, we're having a fundraiser for the Daniel Boone High School Marching Band at Daniel Boone High School. Again, that big card kicks off at 7.30 in the Daniel Boone High School Gymnasium. So come out and support your community through that. As we go to break, we're going to take a look at some throwback footage of 2014 Hall of Fame inductee, the Dirty White Boy. That jolts that vi vi spinal column. Those 33 vertebrae get jammed, there's no question about it. Now 
sort of a, a camel clutch, if you will. Really a two-handed rear chin lock, but uh, pressing the uh, weight of the uh, gluteus maximus down on the lumbar region of the back of uh, Frank Lancaster. Putting a definite strain once again on the spinal column. In short, he's putting a lot of pain on the thumper. Keeping the pressure on him. Five minutes gone by in the match. Remember, Five this match is one fall. Fifteen minutes, you just heard the uh, ring announcer make the announcement. Five minutes has elapsed. Ten minutes remaining. And the dirty white boy has things... Uh, at least at this point in time, well under control. All right, Lancaster now trying to hook the legs of the dirty white boy. If he can get the right kind, of, he did, he got the right kind of momentum going. Lancaster jam the dirty white boy into the turnbuckle but the dirty white boy right back after him snap mare he misses as Lancaster rolls to one side Lancaster coming up slowly as is the dirty white boy right now Lancaster catches him in now Lancaster firing back my backdrop by Frank Lancaster. The thumper getting some good second wind here. Charges after his man. As uh, the dirty white boy halfway across the ring. Lancaster, cross body block, perfectly executed. Anthony powers away from it once again. Brings him up, full body slam. Lancaster going up on that second rope. Tried to come down across the body, but the dirty white boy brought those knees up just in time. Caught him right in the pit of the stomach. Lancaster coming up slowly. Dirty white boy waiting. Caught him with a lariat coming off the ropes. Got the pinfall. He got the pinfall. And so the Dirty White Boys scores an impressive win over uh, Frank the Thumper Lancaster for the official word. Here's our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, in seven minutes and 14 seconds, your winner, the Dirty White Boy, Tony Anthony. Tony Anthony, the winner. Okay, in my last commercial, I said that I could make a jingle about it. Don't leave the room and we're filming. And you probably didn't think that I had an accordion, but I do. So I wanted to make a theme song for Southern States Wrestling. That'll be the jingle. The jingle is the theme song for Southern States Wrestling. We're gonna make it right now. This accordion. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> With the economy changing almost daily and not always for the best, let HassiesKitchenTable.com keep your food budget under control. Leave the work up to us as we find inexpensive recipes, cooking, and shopping tips. You will soon have all the tips, ideas, recipes you need to feed your family well on a budget and have fun while doing it. Attention Mountain Empire. Do you have a business, website, products, or an event to promote? Let us help you reach the masses with TV and internet ads. For just a few dollars a week, we offer commercial spots on Southern States Wrestling, reaching over 150,000 homes in the Mountain Empire and the world with YouTube. Don't wait. Jump on this opportunity now to reach a large audience for an affordable price. Email sswking at aol.com for all the info. Advertising packages you cannot afford to pass up. Welcome back to the Southern States Wrestling Power Half Hour. 
I want to remind you one more time about the September 27th event at the King Sport Civic Auditorium. You can pick up your VIP tickets now at kingofkingsport.com or during business hours at Evermore Comics next to Jersey Mike's on Eastman Road in Kingsport, Tennessee. Next week's program will feature more news and huge announcements about that September 27th event. And before we leave you this week, Bo James got in the studio a little bit early and has some words for you and his nemesis, Frank Parker. They've asked me to close the program here today with a few words about Saturday night, September 27th, Kingsport, Tennessee, the Civic Auditorium. You know, the fall is my favorite time of year. NCAA football, NFL football's getting kicked off, Major League Baseball postseason's getting ready to start, Southern States wrestling is heating up and getting ready for the winter months, getting ready for the fall spectacular, which leads into our big two holiday events each and every year, Thanksgiving and Christmas. But this also marks a time that I have got circled, a date that I have waited on now for almost 10 months by the time we get to it, the 27th of September. I'm talking about the night that I get to stand in the ring and look across the ring at you, Frank the Tank Parker, Mr. Destruction himself. You're big and bad. Last week they showed a little history of our feud over the years and for months and months now Dakota and the people that produced this show have showed you the brutal, brutal, brutal beating that Frank Parker and Scott Sterling put on me that sent me to the hospital, that put me under the knife, that put me out of action for several, several months. Nobody has ever did that. I've had some great, tremendous feuds with a lot of great talent over the years like Tracy Smothers. Ricky Morton, Ricky Harrison, Jimmy Valiant, and I could stand here and list a whole lot more, but none of them have ever put me on the sidelines. None of them have ever put me out of the ring. Frank Parker, you did that with a few swings of a baseball bat and your friend Scott Sterling. When Joe Wheeler and the championship committee and the rules committee asked me, he said, what kind of match would you like, would you prefer to have on the 27th of September? I said, there's only one kind of match I would like to have. It's the way Ron Wright settled all of his scores. It's the way Ron, Ronnie Garvin settled his scores. It's the way the Mongolian Stomper. It's the way Whitey Caldwell. It's the way the Fuller family did it. It's the way everybody here in East Tennessee settled it for decades. I'm talking about the chain match, the Tennessee chain match where I lock it on this arm and across the ring eight feet away from me, Frank Parker is locked to a chain. And in the time we're in that ring, we can use that chain to do anything that we want to to each other. You know, I have had several of these matches in the past. Not always won all of them. Been beat up in every one of them. But I've beat some people up too. Frank Parker, I know what it's like to stand in the ring and wrap that chain around your fist and punch somebody right in the face. And I know what it's like to be punched in the face by one of those chains. Do you? Are you ready for this? Do you realize... For 10 months now, I have said and I've thought every day about you. For months and months now, I have watched the replay over and over and over. Have you hit me with that ball back? Have them carrying me out of the armory down there in Mount Carmel? I have vivid memories of laying on that operating table, listening to the doctors and nurses around me talk to me. Tell me about how they're going to put a tube down my throat in case something goes wrong during the surgery. That's the only time in my life I've ever feared for anything. And I want you to realize this, and I want you to understand this. The 27th of September, Kingsport Civic Auditorium. I got so many great memories there. I know what it's like to walk down on a big match at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. You do too. But do you know what's waiting on you? This is the match that I asked for because this is the match legally that I can do the most damage to you. I'm not coming with a plan of beating you. I'm not coming with the plan of getting my hand raised. I am coming with the plan of injuring you, hurting you, putting you out of wrestling. You did it to me. It's an eye for an eye. It's a tooth for a tooth. Saturday night, the 27th of September, Frank Parker, you bring everything you got. Because I am.